What's up guys, it's the Dual Factory once again with another video. This time it's going to be a deck profile of Invoked One Witch Artifact. This is the new March 31st ban list and this is what I've been waiting for to give you guys a deck profile. Um, this is one of the uh, few decks I have been testing in my brief time of testing since the ban list came out and it's one of my favorites to play currently. Um, I don't know how I feel about it at a competitive level. But I do like its consistency. I do like its zoo matchup since zoo seems to be still very popular. So we're going to go ahead and roll with it and see how it goes. But I'll go ahead and show you guys the list. So to start off the bat, we play three Alistair. Um, this is the... Basically, this is what you want to invest in. We're almost summoned in every turn. Um, it recycles itself. It searches your fusion spell. It does everything you want in a card. And then let's see, on to the win. And this is the only main deck to invoke the monster. And we play three, one which ice spells. She's the one that you want to open every game. This is your one card crystal wing. And then to go along with it, we also play two uh, glass bell and the one snow bell. This is what makes your crystal wing indestructible. Um, this is the ratio I like best, six of them. Because you only want to see the ice spell in hand. The glass bell is okay if you open it. It's not the best, but you can still use it with Wonder One and stuff like that to search your glass bells. So. It's not terrible, but this is the ratio that works best for me. That's it for the Wind Witches, and then for the Artifacts, um, I do play three Scythe, and this is arguably the best part. Like, being able to summon this and shut your opponent down for a turn is an incredible effect. And then I do play the one World Tech to go with it, because sometimes it needs out cards. Um, this is actually an important card, because it's important out to Imperial Order, so keep that in mind. And then I do play two hand traps. Um, I do play two ghost ogre. I, it's not that I necessarily think this is like this is the best hand trap, but I think it's the best suit for this deck because you want the extra light monster to make mecha buff. But uh, it's it still has applications in the meta, so we're still playing it. And that's it for the monsters. On to the spells. We play two copies of invocation. Um, realistically, you could play one copy of this. However, with Lancia being a popular side card and Infernoid being a popular deck. I do play the two copies of it, just because if you lose the one, that way you're not completely locked out of your uh, fusion monsters for the rest of the game, but uh, two's fine. And then I cu couple it with three field spell. Um, this card's ridiculous. It has so many effects on one card. Your, like, your opponent can't negate your fusion summons, they can't respond to this fusion summon of a monster like Raijin, so you can book a moon monsters and your opponent can't respond to it. like. And it searches your main monster of the deck. Like, it's stupid what this card can do. Um, and then to go along with the field spot, I do play two terraforming. I was playing three, but it clogs up your hand really bad. Especially, like, when you like when you have an opening hand and you open multiple field spells. Plus that, like, is this, is this not very good? So I went ahead and cut it down to two. Uh, same thing with the next card I'm going to show you. I cut Wonder Wand down to two. I was playing three. Uh, however... This card does not work well with itself. Like, you would, it, like it works with all the spellcasters in your deck, which you play nine, so realistically you re reach the ratio of three to one. However, the only monster you really want to be wonder wanding away is Alistair, and in rare cases, the Glass Bell. And just, it just sucks having multiple, so I cut it down. I, just, I felt the need to cut it down the two, but it, it gets you there. Um, one upstart for consistency, and because at my this is just for for my locals, but there's domain monarch players, there's a lot of Yosenju players and whatnot. So I main deck three Twin Twister. Um, like I said, this is just for my locals. If I were to take this to an event, I'd probably cut this down to two, for consistency sake. But for now, three is working fine. And that's it for the spells. Onto the traps. I play three Artifact Sanctum. It summons Scythe and Moral Tech out of the deck. It's like playing six barriers. Which, on to the next trap, we do play three barriers to go with it. And then we also play three strike. And then the newly unbanned Imperial Order, which I think this card's worse than Fantasy's Emptiness, but... It has its, pl it has its pluses and minuses. I love it because if you like if you play it right, it's an auto-win. It's just, it's so hard to out. And then I also play two Call of the Haunted. I was originally playing uh, Quaking Mirror Force, but like, battle I hate battle traps in general. And it's so easy to play around them, which this is a lot harder to play around, I think, in my opinion. So, I'll go ahead and try that. That's the main deck. It is 40. And then on to the extra. 
one copy of Bay because you got a player. I'm um, just kidding. But then you also play three copies of the best fusion, which is Ryzen. He's the wind one, and he's the only one that you can summon when you activate the effect of glass spell, so keep that in mind. Also, I, he's the one that can book a moon during either player's turn. That's what I think makes him the best fusion out of all of them. Uh, the second best is Mechaba. He's the ultimate providence. I was playing three at first, but then I just realized that, like, most of the games, like, you're just cycling through Raijins, and then this, like, comes out as a utility. Very rarely you make two, but it does come up that you need two. So I would definitely play no more, no less. And then the rest of the fusions are just a bunch of one-ofs. Um, one Purgatorio. This comes up against Infernoid because you can manage their Deviata and their Anunsu, and you can just clear their board. And then against, like, the Kaijuzu decks, if they summon Doggeran and you get rid of it, you can use their Doggeran and blow out your opponent. Um, one Megalancia, that's Earth, so you can take the Rat Piers. Um, one invokes Kakaitis, I think it is. Um, the only reason he's relevant is because Paleo Frog. Um, you, you just water to make him, and it's really, really, really hard for your opponents to out this in Paleo Frog because you can't target it and you can't destroy it. Like, it's incredibly hard. Like, they have to go Cat Shark and something else to get over it, usually. And then I was playing Kaliga, but I cut it because, like, I was never making it. Even in the matchups where my opponent had Dark Monsters in Graveyard, I'm like, it's just not worth it. So I play the one Elysium. Um, I rarely make this. However, you, it is very important in the mirror match. I learned that the hard way. And uh, it's, just, it's, a, it's a big body. So that's it for the fusions. On to the synchros. I do play the one Winter Bell. Um, I wasn't playing it before because, like, you don't want to get Ghost Ogred. But I also learned that if you're playing this, if your opponent has Ghost Ogre, they're going to Ghost Ogre the uh, Glass Bell anyway. So I just went ahead and threw it in there. Uh, one Flare Wing. In case you do get Maxi, you can make this under Maxi. Uh, one Crystal Wing for the combo. And then I also play a Stardust Dragon just because it's a very powerful level 8 Synchro and it's a Wind one. And then the rare case, you have a Glass Bell and an Alistar on the field. I also play uh, Cypher and Lord Omega. Believe it or not, this actually does come up. And then, for the last monster, the only XYZ I play is I play one wind-up arsenal Zen Mayo. I took this tech from the uh, OCG. I didn't think it made sense at first, but then, like, in the testing and stuff like that, like, you can make Raijin, book a card, and then the following turn you make another Raijin, or use Moral Tech, doesn't matter what you do. You can book two of their monsters in a cycle of a turn, and then you just blow them out with Zen Mayo, so this card's earned a spot in the extra deck for me. And that was my Artifact Win Witch Invoked deck profile for you guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, I am going to be attending YCS Denver, and I don't know if I'm going to play this deck. I don't know if I'm going to play Zoo. Um, but yeah, I'm just testing decks until that event happens. So uh, like I said, always drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Bring you guys more content later.